two, one, so welcome in. I wanted to talk about the difference between a bar graph and a histogram. Now, both of them look very much alike, and so within here, I'm going to kind of avoid having a title, okay, and obviously we would have to label your axes, so your y axes, your x axes, so everything would have to be labeled if it was a, a proper um, graph or chart that we were uh, presenting in statistics. So I'm going to avoid that within here because I just want to concentrate on the key differences and the difference is not labeling. So labeling has to happen for both bar and histograms. Now, when you are uh, talking about bar graphs um, versus histograms, okay, one of the key distinguishing features which you have to keep in mind is that for bar graphs, and I'll try to keep the bar graph information on the left and then the histogram information on the right, just so that you can see the difference. Um, and then you'll see I'll manipulate the one on the right hand side there because they, they clearly can't look kind of the same. So, you know, within here, I guess we have three bars, right? Um, and then on the right hand side, we also have kind of three bars, so they would look very much alike. Now you can have your data set, which includes a lot more data values than just three. Okay, it will depend on the question that you're trying to um, implicate and then get statistical okay, uh, information from. But for bar graphs, one of the key things is that bar graphs are related towards categorical or sometimes referred to as qualitative. So qualitative set of informations, right? So in the variable itself is qualitative, while a histogram is going to be with respect to a quantitative, so quantitative information. Now, examples of qualitative, um, well, we have two key features. We have nominal, okay, and then we have ordinal. So those are the two, okay, that we have that are on the qualitative side. You know, so maybe you're interested in, for example, colors. Maybe you're interested in the pain level, okay, of patients. Um, maybe you're interested in, uh, for instance, uh, you know, shades, okay, for example, of color of some kind. Now, there are many different qualitative information pieces. Now, I'm, I'm not interested in giving you what those actually are. If you want to see qualitative versus quantitative, I can put up a link up above there. But that's the key distinguishing feature, one of them, right? So bar graphs are related to qualitative, while the histograms are related, related to quantitative. And as I mentioned, so on the qualitative side, you have two, you have ordinal, where there is an order associated, okay, with the variable that you have. And then there is nominal, where there is no really no order. So for example, like colors, right? So if you have red, or in this case, like purple, orange, and blue, well, then there's no order into those in any particular way. So that's what you have in here. On the quantitative, well, we have either discrete, okay, um, or we have continuous. And again, you know, if you want to know, okay, kind of the key distinguishing features between discrete and continuous, you can watch the link that I pointed out on the two um, different um, qualitative and quantitative uh, studies. Now, this is one thing, so that's fine, but it wouldn't necessarily have any kind of a difference, okay, if it was related towards the actual presentation of the graph itself. You just know that you would have the variables that would be different. So now, um, as you're looking at this, one of the key things in terms of bars, you will probably notice that you have an actual difference Right, so these bars, because you're talking about a qualitative variable, there is the categories within them, okay? They're separated, so you need to see that the bars are directly separated within here. And that's a uh, key feature of a bar graph. Now, you might say, well, on the histogram that you drew, well, these also seem separated. Now, this will honestly depend on the person who's um, doing the actual creation of the histogram, but technically, okay, you shouldn't necessarily have a separation in here. The only time that it might make some kind of a separation is if your quantitative variable 
is discrete. Because when you're dealing with discrete, right? So in terms of measurements of something that is discrete, there is a key kind of a separation between your discrete values. So for example, one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, in that case, we still are wary with respect to doing a separation, we still probably would prefer to have them actually non-separated. So we would want to have something like this, okay, where they are actually attached together. And then this really will have a big, okay, distinguishing feature because now, okay, if you have them, you know, one beside each other, there is no separation as you had in a bar graph, then this really tells somebody else looking at this particular graph oh, this is a histogram. And that means that your actual um, variable, so this right here, the x-axis, is either discrete or continuous, right? And as I said, you know, it could possibly be discrete and you could have separations in there, but you would have to make it very clear. But for continuous variables, you shouldn't have any separation at all. I mean, unless you're doing it for kind of pedagogical way where you're explaining to somebody and then maybe you have, you know, particular intervals or sometimes weights associated with them, you know, and then for those as you're describing it to someone, but at the end, when you're presenting it at the end, okay, that continuity, okay, should be all together because your X axis, if you would draw it, and it is actually continuous. So let's say if it was with respect to time, I don't know what you're exactly measuring. You know, so maybe, you know, so you started off here between, and this was maybe one second, okay? And then this, let's say was two seconds, and then this was maybe three seconds, right? And then four seconds. So this is clearly a continuous, right? Um, set of data that you have, and our variable would have been, for instance, time. So within here, so for time, there is no separation, right? So if you were grouping um, and then you were measuring something and then you were doing your bar graphs within here, so if you were drawing this out, let me just kind of align it down below and then I can just draw the graphs within here. So if you wanted to know, okay, so you kind of grouped things together and then you wanted to know, okay, so how many, okay, for whatever this was, you know, how many were between one and two seconds Okay, so this would have been one of your actual bars that you had or histograms. But then the other group would have started from two to three. Now within this group, of course, you know, when you're creating your actual groups, you might be very specific and you might say, okay, so these are all the values. And well, let's say this is time T and you're gonna say that T is for instance, less than two seconds, but it is okay, greater or equal to one, and that would be your group, and that's clearly continuous. And then your next group that you would have, as you would be drawing this out, okay, so as you would put this back into here, so let's say like this, let me just change this to orange, I'll just do one of them, so I hope that it gives you a sense. So this would have been your second kind of histogram, your bar, but notice that it aligns, and for this, okay, this would have been all the data that falls in between two, now, this is actually inclusive of two, but it is less than three. Now, of course, these endpoints, so these inequalities that you have in here, that's up to you how you decide, but they should not overlap, right? So notice one does not include two and the other one does include two, right? So that clearly distinguishes and you can see that they're now gonna be side by side because that x-axis is continuous. This does not happen in a bar graph because the categories we have, there is nothing that links them together. So if you're going to be doing something, for instance, if it is, um, I don't know, maybe it's ordinal and it's pain levels of patients and then you can ask them, okay, so what is your pain level? And you would have, okay, I have a pain level of one, you know, maybe pain level of two and pain level of three in here. Um, and then they would have to be fitting themselves into a category. Now, so of course, sometimes patients say, well, my pain level is 2.5 out of three. And you can, you can um, think about that, but then you can also restrict them and say, just please be clear, these are the categories, pain level of one, which is no pain, pain level of two, okay, which is some pain, and pain level of three, which is kind of pain, which is um, you know, maybe not bearable. And then patients would say that. 
and then you would count okay how many patients actually fell in that category so there's a clear distinction there is nothing in between here that you are allowing okay that statistical study to take on so there isn't any 1.5s or 1.2s and if you did do allow a continuous right pain level from 1 to 10 then that would switch okay what you're actually de dealing with in terms of statistical analysis now the same thing would happen if you have a discrete this is where the problem lies because if you have a discrete variable and you're trying to draw it on the other side you may have maybe one two and three but you're, you're not dealing with an ordinal you're actually dealing with a discrete so if you separated them right of course i could have separated them so this you know indeed could have been over here and this could have indeed been over here and for my discrete one so this was one two and three that still would technically work and it's fine and sometimes you will see that but that's really the only time if it is discrete that it should have a gap okay within here um, but you know probably maybe teachers or profs that are going to be watching or watch this video at some point you know might say well hold on a second histograms indeed and i agree with them you know they should have you know we shouldn't really break that rule okay and if it is going to be quantitative they should be one beside each other and then the discreteness just comes because you are allowing that one you know and the two and the three to be actually placed accordingly okay within here so that's one two and three that you would have instead of having these intervals like you would in a continuous setting so those are the key differences so one is qualitative one takes in quantitative so bar graphs are qualitative histograms are quantitative representations and then to be able to distinguish between them is it's actually those gaps right so when you're drawing it out or you're plotting it okay or you're using software tools you know if you do have gaps okay like you do on the left hand side then within here okay so those gaps are kind of telling you that it is a bar graph while here where there is no gaps in between okay or if you have something like this which is very clear then that would be a histogram so that's all that i actually wanted to cover in this particular video um, there is a very nice kind of overview uh, with regards to bar graphs and histograms um, and it's actually on, I think it's on keydifferences.com. Okay, so they pointed it out. I'll put it up in the description or in the show notes. Okay, so anyone can click on it. Okay, on that link, and then they can go back in there and use it as a reference. Okay, and this okay is just kind of a bigger overview because I think most students do miss it. To be honest with you, the general population kind of may not know what the difference is between a bar graph and a histogram. And hopefully this gives you a little bit of a sense okay, of what they are. Okay, if you want to learn about bar graphs and histograms, how to create them, okay, I've made videos. So you can uh, certainly okay, go in on my 1mjourney.com, click on math, okay, and then under math you can go into data management and you'll find bar graphs and histograms if you search that site, okay, or on the YouTube channel like this. Okay, and I can put the bar graph and the histogram links okay, um, scattered within this video so that you can also um, peek into there that way. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.